Sunday, October 2nd, 2022, the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Increase your faith. It is the prayer of the disciples today. But can faith grow? If faith is reduced to the ascent given to a list of truths, then it cannot grow. But if faith is understood as developing an unconditional trust in the Lord, then it is easy to realize that faith can indeed grow. Grow or diminish. Just as a child increasingly trusts in a reassuring father as an emotional connection is established through familiarity, that trust could also diminish if the father has not been around the child during the early years of his life. An uncertain and wavering faith is our own daily experience. We believe in Jesus, but we do not trust him totally. We don't have the courage to free ourselves from certain habits, to make certain renunciations. Here we have a faith that needs to strengthen itself. To explain the growth of faith, Jesus employs a tree. If Jesus refers to a sycamore tree, then the allusion is to its very strong roots. The roots can withstand for over 600 years and are very difficult to uproot. Jesus says, faith can realize something as impossible as uprooting a sycamore or making a mulberry grow in the sea. These miracles he speaks of refer to the possibility of the transformations that can happen in our society and in the whole world when we trust the word of the gospel and put it into practice. For one who believes, Jesus says, no impossible situation exists. Those who trust in his word will be witnesses to extraordinary and unexpected miracles. But Jesus also warns that no one might trust in God in order to get rewards. So he narrates the parable of the slave, which leaves us a bit bitter and disillusioned. After a hard day's work, the slave returns home very tired. The master, instead of complimenting him for his service and inviting him to sit and eat a piece of bread, demands harshly, First, serve me. After I am satisfied, you will eat supper. Jesus makes use of the example to transmit a theological message. He wants to correct the Pharisaic spiritual guidance of that time, in our time too, that preached a religion of merits. They were saying, at the end of life, God will remunerate based on each person's performance. Multiplying good works, prayers, fasting, almsgiving, religious practices, sacrifices, scrupulous observances of the commandments and precepts, all for meriting reward from God, is Pharisaic. Such a God, like a master who rewards well-behaving servants, corresponds perfectly to our logic. We think it right to imagine such a God. We are not aware that we are reasoning exactly like the Pharisees. Those who practice virtues for merits put themselves at the center of their own interests. The major trouble provoked by a religion of merits is to reduce God to an accountant in charge of maintaining the balance sheet and signing accurately the debts and credits of each person. The parable wants to destroy this image of God. Because of the idea that, in doing good, we acquire merits before God is so rooted in us, we feel very uncomfortable at the prospect of having to repeat the phrase we are simple servants. We have done nothing more than our duty. 
Jesus does not intend to underestimate good works. Rather, he wants to liberate us from dangerous egoism. Jesus wants us to understand that the Pharisaic behavior of doing good works to merit a reward is foolish, because all that is good is always a gratuitous gift of God and not the merit of the person. What do you possess, says St. Paul, that you have not received? If you have received it, why are you proud of it as if you have not received it?